Hi, okay, final part of fixing the 172nd Tiger Moth. That is 99% done now. Um, I've just painted the propeller blade and it just needs the little yellow tip on it. Everything glued up, all good to go back on the shelf. Okay, so my plans had changed a number of times while doing this relating to the blue tack uh, to get the upper wing position but um, as things ended up I didn't do that method. Just showing you quickly and then I'll discuss all of the aspects of this. doesn't have the exhaust on I will make an exhaust not very important tail skids a bit of a nuisance that had broken off and I needed to put on a bit of strengthening there um, symmetry wise I think I've got it 99% and in fact it still has um, the ability to be adjusted believe it or not so even with all the gluing, um, I can still put a little bit of force onto the onto the wings and twist them ever so slightly. But uh, this is totally good enough. It's um, if I judge the li the alignment of leading edges and trailing edges, to be honest, it's it's virtually except I mean it's it's you'd have to look really really closely to fault it. And the upper and lower wing arrangement is very, very good. The lower wing has a higher angle of incidence than the upper wing, uh, as on most biplanes, so that the lower wing will stall before the upper wing. Um, because having a upper wing stall before a lower wing is a more violent stall and a less... well... It's easier to recover if your um, lower wing stalls first because then you end up with a parasol situation which is where the upper wing you're essentially flying an aircraft with an upper wing um, if you don't know what a parasol aircraft is that's essentially a biplane without the lower wing so it's not a high wing where the wing is attached to the fuselage it's a wing on struts okay Originally, didn't plan on doing anything special about the middle, the end struts. But in the end, it was because I addressed the end struts first with a, a strong brass structure that I was able to actually put the upper wing on. And I posted a post, not a video, a post on my channel showing the picture of that glued on onto only two joints with super glue. So I was able to arrange the wing symmetrically and in position with super glue with only two joints um, so the rear parts of the end struts were not there and none of the outer struts were there now that still allowed me a little bit of adjustment to movement it could still still move within a millimeter or two and that allowed me to then position the outer struts into position, get the alignment and the angle of attacks uh, correct, angle of incidence, um, glue them in, then put on the rear part of the end struts, that's just with plastic and performs no structural strength whatsoever. And of course then I'd built the, the main part of the undercarriage frame out of brass and so that's all very good. Okay, the the propeller blade, I mean, nobody wants to go sculpting up a, a Tiger Moth propeller blade. But it wasn't a big deal at all. Um, just, just looked at my bits of plastic card on the shelf, chose one that was more or less the, the right cut for that. Maybe needed to trim it slightly. So you start off with something longer, gives you something to hold. Just file it till you are, you know, I mean, you're not getting it to the correct shape immediately. You're just gradually filing it and filing. It doesn't take very long because it's such a small piece. 
and measuring it against the, the remaining blade until you're more or less at that shape. Um, sand it a little bit, uh, deburr the edges so that you actually start getting a semi aerofoil shape or at least an elliptical, well it is actually an aerofoil shape on the propeller. And then I, and then when you cut it off, leave a bit of extra and I drilled into the prop hub so that I had like a, probably a millimeter's worth of um, a little plastic to, to fit into there. So I mean it's still very delicate but it's not just going to pop off at the slightest touch. And then to get the twisting, that was almost more, more of an issue. I had to actually sit with that little piece and sit and try and over twist it. Took, took a fair while, took almost as much time to, to keep a twist in it as to create the thing in the first place. But if I didn't tell you now, and looking at the shapes, you, you would not really know that that was a prop blade. At certain angles you, you may think it looks a little bit suspicious, but all, in, in all respects I think uh, not bad at all. Um, so that's good. Now just relating to those main struts, the end struts, so that was a, you know, going from the top wing down through the fuselage and up, but of course you can't bend that all in one, otherwise you can't get it into the fuselage, so you bend that, bend that, sli slide it through the holes, measure it, make sure, and, and of course I had the original parts to measure against on the other, on the, my other kit, so that I knew more or less what I needed. Uh, slot that through, then bend it up against the fuselage. Luckily the Tiger Moth's um, plastic thickness and everything can handle the bending of that by pressing it against it. So that gave me one upright, then I needed another upright which, which would bend forward and get soldered against it and file the edges so that you so that you end up with a sort of a flat joint and not, and not a um, a wider joint than needed so it could actually get get close if you know what I mean. Um, I gave it a lick of uh, gloss yellow just so that we didn't have the white and the brass color there but all in all totally fine I'm totally happy with that it can go back on the shelf and, and it's better than it was actually um, and I can fix the other one which is also a somewhat older Tiger Moth, but not nearly as old as this one, which is missing a strut or two. The fact that these outer struts are just tube now instead of the aerofoil shape, you, you don't immediately realize that. And because they finish, it looks totally acceptable, I'd say. Um, honestly, if, if uh, you put this on the table, someone would have to know the Tiger Moth fairly well to actually realize that they're not all the kit parts and that some have been scratch built so that's good and i'll so i'll do another tiger moth soon since it's such a simple kit well i such I, I should say it is a simple kit but it's far from the simplest to build with all of those struts i'll do another one soon because i've never sprayed a tiger moth and i don't want to change this one this one's sort of historic restoration just to, to look like an 80s aeroplane, and it is an 80s aeroplane, uh, at least an 80s model for me. Um, but I want to do another one, you know, doing it sort of more up to standard, um, spraying it nicely. Probably still keep the yellow scheme, I like that. Anyway, I've got about three to build, so... But another another nice yellow one will be coming soon. Okay, that's all for the Tiger Moth video. More soon.